So, we are here at the Blue Ridge Parkway Visitor Center, just outside of Asheville. As you can see, unfortunately, it's very misty and foggy right now. All right, so let's just pause for a second here as we get to the trailhead. Just want to listen to see what we can hear first before we go in. See, that's a bird. Yeah, you're good at this. It's lovely in here. It really is. It's all misty and drippy. It's it's hard not to Fall feel like you're in a fantasy world. Oh yeah. When you come into it, you've got like you said, you've got the drippy, you've got the misty, you've got all these wonderful old trees. The sound of dogs barking. Frodo, lead the way. Get off the road, quick! <laughs> it's all there. Around here, there's a lot of song right now. There's jays, warblers, vireos, tufted titmouse, crows. So, we are here. It's our first overlook on the uh, parkway. I'm just going to pause because we just saw a bear. The, the birds aren't really doing much here, to be honest, but we heard some noises underneath and uh, yeah, big black bear. Very cool. That's all there is to say about it. Yeah, cut to bear footage. Just go. Why look at us anymore? They've already cut to it. Yeah. <laughs> what a glorious overlook, Phil. This is the uh, Ten Bark Ridge Overlook. I forget the elevation, but it's over 3,000 feet. I remember that much. Um, nice little valley down there, red-tailed hawk. Uh, what else have we seen down there, Rich? Indigo buntings. Indigo buntings. Yeah. Now, hopefully they are actually very blue. Yes, they're, they're, and they're very, very... Um, decorative, decorative, if you're holding some kind of church event. Yeah. No, th I mean, they're relatively easy to see, aren't they? Yeah. But over that way, we just had a uh, male and female scarlet tanager, which I'm very excited about. What are they, Phil? The birds. Okay. Well, the male is uh, scarlet with black wings. Female? Female is yellow with black wings. Why? Why yellow when it's a scarlet tanager? Because no one cares about the females when they name birds. I'm not in charge of the uh, naming system, I'm afraid. Now, if you look behind Phil's head, We've had a so, so little storm thing coming through, um, but it actually seems to be clearing up behind it, so we may actually avoid this. Yeah. Maybe by staying here, we've actually locked out. So, we're here. We're currently 3,890 feet up. We could walk away from the sign and talk now. That's true. But that's where we are. That's where we are. So, uh, Blackbirdian warbler! We had a good warbler. I think Phil's probably seen one before, but... I've only ever seen one of these before. Was it as good a view as this? Because this is amazing. Uh, yeah, it was on the... Um, it was when we went to the mountains with Mum and Dad. Uh-huh. And he was on the railing. Oh, nice. Um, but I don't have that recorded. So this is what I refer to as an e-lifer. Um, it's not... Actually, one you can put on the books. But Yeah, it's, it's one that I've not been able to record even though I have technically seen it previously. Oh, here he is again. Let's see if I can get a picture through my He's just flirting with us. Yeah he is. That colour on his front is amazing there. Incredible. You tend to, you know, I mean you get orangey birds and you get reddish birds and you get yellowy birds. But all in one in a kind of sort of um what's that word where it goes from one colour? Gradient. Mm. sort of thing. It's kind of like a sunburst. Here we are at the end of the world. Everything's gone. Yeah, decimation. This used to be a great forest. 
Now look at it. It's um, it's impressively savage here. I gotta say, that's why they call it savage rocks. They call it craggy gardens. <laughs> not 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 these people. For birding and sightseeing, there's not a lot of point in staying in this area. It's quite impressive in its own right. Yeah, we we need to drop back down to to actually see anything at this point. Yeah, the only thing you're gonna get up here is some stray uh, juncos. Yeah, I see my first junco of the year. Quite possibly my last, I don't know. It's my last of the year until the next one later in the year. Yeah. Because we don't. Yeah, that they come in, they're in the, December or whatever. They're not very common in northern Florida at all. Um, but obviously it's still winter here, which is why they haven't left. Yeah, if we get a chance, we'll video some snow out the window because it really is there. there. There is actually snow by the road. And we've seen presumably just the, the last Junko alive. There he is, look, he's right down there on the, on the wall. Oh, wait, there's, there's two of them. There's two. It's the last two Junkos alive. <laughs> wait, there's three. No, there's the isn't. last three Junkos. Oh. Um, yeah, no, it's, um, it's cold up here, but it's, wa it's always warm in our hearts. I've taken my hood down to show you how quickly I'll freeze to death. <laughs> I give it another five, maybe ten seconds. There he goes. And thus ended Avian Adventures. You know what I'm thinking is they probably see a lot of people. Yeah. And you know what? People drop food. Yeah. And you know what Junkos like? Food. Yeah. You, you do know a lot about Junkos. <laughs> <laughs> We've come down from that desolate place and we found there actually was forest down here. Um, and I wanted to stop at somewhere that was a bit more surrounded by trees in the hopes that there'd be a bit more bird traffic um, and just birds going about their daily business. As it turns out, there's an oven bird just over here that I heard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a curious name. I wonder where that comes from. They're just keen bakers. Okay. Here's an interesting fact. We once found a bird skeleton in an oven in uh, where we used to live in Chelford. I have no recollection of this. <laughs> it's a place near Gloucester where we grew up. No, I, I, no childhood. I have no recollection of the event in question. Uh, it wasn't like a big, we didn't sort of celebrate it or anything. But it's a memory I have. Did I you don't, have a funeral for it? I mean, it certainly got cremated. Uh, turn the oven on and <laughs> it was, it was an old oven in the garage slash basement. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Hello. My favourite bit about it is the Harry Potter scar on its head. It's got like a lightning stripe down the top of its head. Yeah. We are... we've um... This is about an hour after we just came down off the mountain. You remember that? Yeah, I was there. Look at... look at how cold we were. A little flashback. Okay. <laughs> now look how beautiful it is. We could almost be in t-shirts right now. Some of us actually almost are in t-shirts. So we've come down to Asheville to Beaver Park, which is a little sort of town park. Um, and uh, there's a little bit of greenery behind us we can go in and kind of do some stuff. So we're going to do that, see what we can see. Yeah. Like 100% straight at me. So unamused.
it's a uh, it's a nice look at the red eye vireo there. It's uh, it's really nice to get one that close though for the red eye vireo. He's lacking a full tail. Yeah. He might have just been caught by a hawk or something. I can't imagine why. For food? No, I mean, I can't imagine how a hawk could possibly have caught him when he's so careful. Oh. I see. And shy. He, he could do with being just a little bit more discreet. So, uh, we're on the turn back around here at whatever the, what, Beaver Lake? Uh, Beaver Lake. Beaver Lake here in Asheville. So yeah, we, we picked up a lot of the, uh, a lot of the birds that we wouldn't have picked up higher up. We've got yellow rump warbler. I feel like a day isn't really complete without a yellow rump. It's not complete. Uh, we got blackbird, we got a kingbird, picked up some cowbirds, um, a couple of herons, which is good. Uh, what else we got? A uh, couple of wrens. A couple of wrens, yes. Two, two types of wren, we think. We've got to just uh, survey the footage when we get back. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a very nice place, this. I, I could see it. There's The other side, obviously, is less, um, less uh, secluded. Therefore, you're not going to get quite the same number of birds. But of course, that's where the kingbird and the uh, cowbirds were. So, yeah. Every bird has a habitat. Every habitat has a bird. That's, that's going to be our avian adventures motto. Uh, the bluish parkour is very much living up to expectations. It was... It was warbler-tastic. We you had... know what? I think we pretty much experienced every kind of weather going up the... Did. We had parkway. glorious sunshine where I felt like I was wearing too many layers and then at the top of the Craggy Gardens uh, Visitor Center, oh my goodness, it was literally like apocalyptic. It was almost a frozen tundra. It was so bizarre. But the, the reward for braving the elements up there was the Junko and his friends. We, we, we had coffee and that, that theoretically reinvigorated us to uh, go and uh, hit up Beaver Lake. We hit that lake like a beaver hits a dam that's it right it doesn't hit it at all it builds it and we built that lake into a great birding uh trip <laughs> didn't we so we went for a walk <laughs> around the lake and then we we came back and realized that there was a, a How much relatively extensive boardwalk and um yeah we saw all sorts didn't we I have to say that Magnolia Warbler, um, I've only seen either immatures or females before. Seeing the, the adult male and breeding plumage is pretty spectacular. He made a valiant bid to be Bird of the Weekend, didn't he? I would say he made a very good bid, yeah. Bird of the Weekend. Bird? Of the Weekend. I'll tell you why I, I went for the Blackburnian Warbler. Oh, it's tell because us. it was very, very much one of the ones I wanted to see on this trip. And it's just it's just so striking. Like it's just really cool. So I was very, very excited to see that. I really liked the Blackburnian Warbler because it was uh it was just like that that colouring is somewhat unique, I would say. Yeah. What advice would we give somebody? Let's let's do something useful in this whole thing. What advice would we give, having got some ex slight experience, if somebody was going to try and bird that Blue Ridge Parkway? I think what we found is that you have to try and find a balance between appreciating the birds and appreciating the scenery. You don't want to try and blitz through every overlook. You want to take your time, enjoy it try and find some birds and you know what that's true of life take your time enjoy it and try and find some birds just throw up in my mouth <laughs> <laughs>